Anyway, let's talk about the elections because uh, we just concluded the Iowa caucus. And this is not a politics story. This is a tech story. Coming up, the New Hampshire primary. And Dan Patterson's back. He's a senior writer now at Tech Republic. But this is... How many New Hampshire primaries will this be for you? This is, uh, first of all, hey guys, it's hey, crazy. Dan. It's been Good saving. Um, so this is my third uh, New Hampshire primary. 2008, uh, 2012, and now 2016. Yeah, and, and uh, I've done the conventions and the other parts of the cycle. I love that you mentioned that this is not a political issue. I, you know, I've never covered the horse race in terms of the, the partisan nature of it. I've always covered tech and politics, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. You know, I work for uh, Jason Heiner at Tech Republic, and we had this crazy idea of uh, maybe we can do some forecasting of our own with big data. So as you know, the, the real issues that we look at uh, in terms of business technology, uh, the trends right now are just, it's big data, social media as a communications tool, and uh, uh, cybersecurity. So Jason and I, over the last uh, couple weeks, we've kind of doubled down on doing do-it-yourself data analysis. You know, I'm a journalist, I'm not a data scientist. However, we are working with some academics who are kind of helping us figure out programs like Stata and R and some of these big complicated programs. But Jason and I kind of sat down and we we're like, but you can do it yourself. And if you can do it yourself and you run a small business, or even if you're just at home and you're a good geek and you want to kind of do some tracking of your own, you can do it with some free apps, you know, with, with Excel, with Numbers, or with Google Sheets. You can do the same stuff that we're doing. And although we're not doing right now incredibly sophisticated stuff, we have, you know, partners like IASD and other big companies, but we really want to keep it simple. So what we've been doing leading up to the New Hampshire primary is just tra tracking Twitter. Is, is Twitter a, a serious part of the conversation, or is it something that we as technologists use? And you'd be shocked, or maybe you guys wouldn't be shocked, to learn that, man, we can forecast some stuff using Twitter. And in fact, we saw what they called Marco Mentum before the Iowa caucus. Wait a minute, saw... Marco Mentum? Like like Mark, yeah, right. Marco Rubio's surprise overtaking of Donald Trump in yep. the Iowa caucus. <laughs> yep. And I'll, I'll tell well, you guys Wasn't something. it Cruz, though, who won? Yeah, and I'll tell you guys So something. is there cruz Mentum too? Maybe. Uh, cru <laughs> no, that's mentum. cruise control. Cruise, cruise control. control. Yeah. Okay. There we right. go, yeah. Right. Also, you know, I'm skipping the Republican debate to talk to you guys tonight. Oh, uh, you can go. You can go. You, I mean, gosh, we haven't heard from them much. I'd really like to know what their yeah. stands are. Right. How many debates are they going to have, for crying out I know. loud? <laughs> Like, tell, like, give me the new screensavers of the Republican debate. I know what my choice is. I think you've already <laughs> seen the Republicans debate a, a little right, bit. Right, exactly. Who's so using, in your opinion, who's using social media the best on either side? Um, Ted Cruz and uh, Marco Rubio are both. Interesting. Look, we found that there are a couple firms that sell data. Uh, there's a good company called Nation Builder, and there's a couple big companies in New York and Boston, and we'll be interviewing these companies. Uh, they're nonpartisan. You know, they'll sell data to anyone. Uh, but we found that the two people who spent big on big data and then also leveraged big data for social media, Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz. How the do they use it? What is it, what is it yeah. they learn and what do they do with what they learn to help so, get votes? Yeah, so social media is incredibly important here. It's not just putting tweets out, but it is inbound social signals. So they are able to power the, they call it micro-targeting. Micro-targeting right. is all the phone calls, it's the right. door knockers, and it's the stuff that comes to your mail. This is right. the revolution that's happening in marketing across the board, not right. just politics. Yes, it is. Right. So and and Jason Calacanis told me, you know what you should do with Twit? And we're not gonna do this, I promise. You should take your mailing list and you give Facebook those email addresses. And then they generate a second list of email addresses of people who don't listen to Twit, but who are similar to the first set of people and then you target yep. those people because they would be exactly natural right. listeners it's that kind yes. of thing i don't want to do it because yeah. it feels invasive but you could see how that'd be great for a candidate sure right precisely and these things you know sasha eisenberg who's a reporter for the washington post wrote a great book if you want to read about this called the victory lab again this is not about politics it's about the data in it and all of this micro targeting they're doing exactly that with Facebook, and they are doing it with Facebook, and they're also doing it with, it powers these old school techniques. So they they see these social signals, and the mailer you get may not be the same yeah. mailer your neighbor gets. Yeah. And the language that's used, like this is not, they're not hiring interns to, to just type up some words. Oh you know, no. This, right, every single word in these mailers has yeah. been tested and yeah. retested yeah. in order to, to do what they call in the business, it's called GOTV, get out the vote, and that is, 
you know, if you think about your business, right, your, your job is to get somebody to spend money on you in some way or another, and that's the conversion, right? So GOTV is the political version of conversion. You have to take somebody, it's not enough to be passionate about an issue. Yeah. You need to get that person to the polls, and right. you need them to want to go to the polls because it's not enough for me to go. I have to bring my neighbor, and right. I have to bring, you know. So the techniques, the tactics that are being used, some of them are on the right, that kind of creepy side. But the other, we've just found by doing this very basic, very simple data analysis, that these tools you can use yourself, and you can do it yourself with free or very affordable programs that almost everybody has. It's uh, it's a new world. One of the tricks, of course, is now reaching, and it's the same thing with advertisers, the 18 to 25-year-olds, because mm -hmm. they're not watching yep. TV. Yep. Uh, in fact, it turns out they're not even doing YouTube that much. It's They're all on Snapchat now. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. In fact, uh, the Clinton campaign probably does this the best, but Hillary's I would Hillary's got a very be... active Snapchat. Oh, oh, Ted boy. Cruz has yep. uh, It's amazing. Yep. Yeah. And, sh you know, they do the same thing that a lot of our friends and colleagues in technology do, that where you, you do these real narrow vertical slivers of content. You know, you are making video content specifically for Snapchat, specifically for WhatsApp, specifically for these platforms where user behavior may shift just a little bit depending well or a lot depending on if you are on snapchat versus facebook and so doing this uh, kind of vertical marketing uh, you know i don't want, i don't know if it's been successful or effective i think we'll probably find out uh, it's it's really winning hearts and minds we'll find out uh, on tuesday here in new hampshire if that's worked but uh, particularly with with senator clinton we'll find out uh, uh, pretty soon if if this type of marketing works if it gets young people to the polls or does this just make people go huh cool yeah i forgot yeah i mean the problem with young people is you may get the young people excited about your snapchat but as you point out getting them into the how polls does that is translate? a whole yeah, how does that another translate? kettle yeah. of fish you know they, right. got, they got other things to do yeah um, they do well are you having fun is it is Always, this yeah. is this year appreciably different than four years ago um it it is and it is not uh every cycle has a. Uh, it's just like a tech cycle i mean there are small things that you can point to and say yeah right. that's different yeah that's different but it all of all election cycles after your first one you go ah the, all all politicians are the same i don't care who wins or loses i'm here for the game yeah. uh, and that's what uh, happens to veteran reporters that's why it becomes horse race coverage doesn't it yeah, I, it, it is uh, because that's easy. And that's also, I mean, I give Jason Heiner a lot of credit because he saw this as something that, like, look, a lot of people are turned off by politics. Let's not turn them off. Let's let's not talk politics. Let's talk about the reasons that, I mean, cybersecurity, my goodness, there is so many reasons that all of us need to be concerned with not just policy in terms of cybersecurity, but, but our own... Uh, our own privacy. These are issues in tech we've been talking about for years, and they're finally kind of, you know, tomorrow morning I'm sitting down with Madeleine Albright, and I'll get to ask her about Snowden. You know, I want to know, like, what should our, what is a correct policy for cybersecurity in this age, in the post-Snowden age, where yeah. we need to protect yeah. privacy, but we also really need to, you can't take this stuff lightly, and what's the balance? If you're the Secretary of State, what's the right balance? We we were trying to get Peter Hamby, who very famously left, he was C a very uh, high-ranking CNN political correspondent, oh, yeah. who yeah. went to Snapchat, where he's, <laughs> where he's doing, I think this is actually one of his pieces, he's doing little Snapchat stories all Brilliant. throughout the campaign, and uh, he, of course, is a little too busy right now to appear, but we'll get him later on on the show. He said he'd be glad to do it because I find this fascinating that they're getting uh, there's there's Peter. Uh, they're getting I think that's him. They're getting people from uh, mainstream media to move over to these new medium media. Uh, and yeah. and I find it, you know, some of it you got to think is just trendy. Yeah, like when yep. I when I watch stuff like this, I, it makes me wonder if the actual you know the younger generation that's using Snapchat a lot sees kind of the older, more official people moving in and using things that's like big, colorful, bubbly, off, right? you know, that's text when they on the go. screen, yeah. and you know crazy emojis all over the place, animating all that kind of stuff. Do they see that and think? Oh, they're speaking my language? Or do they see that and think, what are you trying to do here? This obviously doesn't fit on you. This is a new kind of reporting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know if it really works. No, and you're not going to get my generation watching. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, right, right. And, and it's, you know, it's important to separate the medium from uh, the messenger. 
Right. And I, Jason, I totally agree with you. A lot of us who've been on Twitter and on social media for ages and we've been talking about technology, you know, we have a relationship with our audience because we have a relationship with the right. audience. They inform me every single day. I learn These something from the audience. These guys are carpetbaggers. They're, they're... Yeah. And maybe they're good people, but it's, I, I mean, when you see that's the slick presentation style, yeah. the kids are smart. They don't and, buy yeah. They yeah. Don't buy it. Hey, it's so good to talk to you, Dan. I'm glad you're back on the uh, campaign trail. Are you going to stick with this, or is it just New Hampshire? Uh, I'll be on most of the trail for Oh, uh, for my God. Public. He's back on the bus, baby. <laughs> back on the bus. Back on the bus. <laughs> Senior writer Dan Patterson with Tech Republic. Uh, after New Hampshire, it's on, what is it, Super Tuesday's coming up. You've got a bunch yeah, of South stuff. South Carolina, Super yeah. Tuesday, but uh, let's, let's hope it's uh, Super San Francisco after that. Yeah, make it happen. <laughs>